Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Finance Committee meeting of January 18th, 2024. Uh, as chair of the committee, I recognize that we have a, for, uh, a quorum and I call this meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is uh, reports and announcements. I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. This is our first uh, meeting of 2024. I hope everybody had a nice holiday and welcome back to an agenda filled year. Are there any, any reports or announcements any other member of the committee would like to share? If not, we can go to item number three on the agenda, which is to accept the minutes of November 16th, 2023. Uh, I hope everybody got a chance to review the minutes. Are there any concerns or issues with what was recorded? No. Can no. I get a motion to accept <coughs> the move minutes? To accept the minutes. Second. 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 All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All against, please say nay. And the motion passes unanimously. We shall now proceed to item number four on the agenda, which is the town manager's report. Over to you, to the town manager's team. Good evening, everyone. So Alex will take uh, us through FY24 revenue and expenditures and get you up to speed. All right, thank you. So uh, before you, you have a printout of Schedule A local receipts to date, which is um, actually through today. So you'll see that revenue to date is 6,014,615, which is 52.09% of budgeted revenues for FY24. Um, I've included an additional column that shows percent collected to date for each category. So as you can see, um, many of these categories are performing well over the 50% mark for the fiscal year, and a few have already exceeded our budgeted figures. Um, and just to compare, looking through the first six months of the fiscal year, so July through December, we've collected 6378000 and this is $1.3 million more than what was collected during the first six months of FY24. So we're definitely on track to outperform those revenues, um, especially with the biggest commitment of motor vehicle excise coming up. And then just on the expenditure side, not too much to report. Uh, we did recently transfer funds from the personnel board to cover salary implementation for the cost of living adjustment and performance increases. And we have no definitive reserve fund transfer needs at this time, but we'll keep you updated as we continue through the rest of the fiscal year. Any comments or questions from the committee? Dennis? Um, yeah, I, on the hotel excise, um, I see we're outperforming there. I know there was talk about like days in, I think is now no longer a hotel. Um, do we expect those to end up below or are they now gonna end up above for the year? Not that it's a lot of money, but. So that's one that we're keeping an eye on. The most recent quarter that we got was September through November. And we did receive um, just a little less than we had in the previous quarter. So we're just gonna keep an eye on it as. as yeah, I'm just goes. wondering how, you know, the, the sheltering Yep. Um, is affecting the budget. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was still seemingly producing revenue through the second quarter, at least partially. And uh, um, the hotel still exists. It's just not a franchise of the Days Inn any longer. Okay. Um, but we anticipate, uh, we have seen a decline in uh, shelter occupancy there, down about 20%. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, we do receive revenue, of we, as we've discussed in the past, from some Airbnbs within the community. Yep. So um, it's good news that we're already over budget, and um, it'll be a challenge to figure out next year, but we'll see where we are in a couple months. Uh, if, if I could just add just a little bit, um, you know, this is these receipts are really strong, and, and we're kind of on on path to be uh, in another record setting year. So we'll talk about a little bit that when we get to the FY25 revenues, um, where we are at this point in the process and what may change. Okay. And then I had one more question. I, the recurring Medicaid and uh, supplemental tax, those numbers are, you know, double, triple. Mm -hmm. um, just wondering what was the cause for that? I could, I can start. Um, so the supplemental tax is 
um, whenever there's uh, additional opportunities to assess between January 1st and June 30th, we, we can capture that tax revenue in the following year. So that's kind of like new growth in some ways. It comes in as a local receipt, but it is a property tax revenue. Um, and then the recurring Medicaid is, is you know, a grant-based program for educational reimbursements. And um, normally we don't receive those funds throughout the year. They mostly come in at the, at the end of the fiscal year, which is why we're conservative. But the opportunities have presented themselves this year and we have received uh, those funds. So um, I think if you go back and look at Medicare, Medicaid, and the supplemental tax, it just varies so much from year to year, but you know, the, these numbers um, might not be an absolute anomaly, if, if that makes sense. Yep, okay. And then the Selco Solar, just what exactly is that revenue for? Sure, so um, there is, do you, you have yeah. this one, Dave? Maybe a little clearer. Yeah, there, there is a, a formula that we use to calculate the reimbursement, but um, for the solar that um, is at the, the landfill, there is a reimbursement to the town because it did adjust some of the payments from um, wheel abrader or um, wind waste. Right. And this was Selco's um, uh, adjustment to make sure that the town didn't lose revenue when the solar was installed at the landfill. Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Kaiser, the follow-up question for the um, uh, immigrants: that twenty percent reduction is a, are we expecting to backfill or not a bit? Well, it, it's hard to more. tell. Um, we just know that the the property will continue to be used as a shelter, but uh, seemingly uh, the state is doing a good job at finding more permanent housing for these folks. So it's kind of a, a definitely a better trend than even the last time that we met as far as uh, we, we're not seeing a lot of new families. Okay. Um, but we're, we don't get any advance notice really or, or anything. We just monitor the numbers that they provide us. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Ask one quick question. Rajesh. <laughs> oh, one, one quick, uh, maybe just for my educational purpose. Mm -hmm. So other uh, line, line item 16, other department revenue. So what that includes, it looks like a, what is six per 45 percent uh, year to date, collected to date? Yeah, that, those would be like the, the fees um, collected from all various departments. You can consider dog, dog licenses in there or if somebody wanted to get um, specific birth certificate um, would be some examples of those fees that are collected in other departmental revenues. Thank you. Yeah. All good? Yeah. So we can proceed to item number five on the agenda, which is uh, a review of the budget the fiscal year 2025 budget. So uh, we'll talk a, a, about the FY25 uh, revenue model and just touch base on that. Uh, some good news and some bad news there. Um, then I just merged the rest of uh, B and C in there, or excuse me, B uh, with preliminary FY25 budget. So I have a presentation, some slides to work through with you. So just a reminder to everyone, uh, we are right on track where we want to be at this point in time. So we're at the first turn that's on the slide uh, between January 8th and uh, the 19th, where we're reviewing departmental uh, budgets internally, first with a team in the town manager's office, uh, and then um, with individual department heads. And uh, we're through, I would say, probably 80% of the budgets. We do have a couple to wrap up at the beginning of next week, but we'll certainly uh, have that completed at that time uh, and remain on track. The, the next major milestone would be 
the publication of fiscal projection one, which we'll provide to the finance committee on February 16th. Uh, so uh, we'll be in that position. Um, so I'll talk about revenues just for a couple minutes. Um, here's an overview of what we're recommending that we've provided in the past. Um, there's a couple revisions. First, we've adjusted utility revenue based upon the latest information. So that has pushed up our recommended budgeted level up from about 179 million to 182.7 million. Um, and then an area that um, I am concerned about is our second largest revenue category, which is um, state aid. So um, state aid is uh, largely associated uh, with funding that we receive for um, educational purposes. Um, and my biggest concern with the FY25 revenues is that uh, was the beginning of last week, the governor announced mid-year budget cuts, so-called 9C cuts, which is a part of the general laws that gives the governor unilateral authority to make budget adjustments when revenues uh, aren't meeting expectations. Um, so during that process, uh, the governor was uh, as kind to municipalities as she could be and reduced budgetary earmarks uh, that were found throughout the budget. It did impact Shrewsbury. We had a $30,000 earmark for the acquisition of furniture for the library children's room, and uh, it was reduced to $15,000, so cut in half. So all in all, um, not a terrible story, but what I'm most concerned about is the consensus revenue numbers that were um, agreed upon for fiscal year 25. And they're um, roughly $2 billion less than was agreed upon at the beginning of the FY24 budget process. And um, although the one caveat to that is that um, there is still $1.5 billion projected from the fair share tax or the millionaire's tax, which sits outside of that. Those are earmarked for specific purposes, but still helpful, especially for education. Um, so with consensus revenues being set at less than they were set for the for prior year, um, I'm a little nervous about how the governor is gonna approach unrestricted general government aid, which is about $4 million in revenue to us, and the base education chapter 70 formula. Um, in years past for unrestricted general government aid. Um, those revenues to cities and towns have been um, increased at the same percentage as overall revenues were agreed upon from year to year. So if overall state revenues were projected to go up 3%, then unrestricted general government aid would go up 3%. Uh, with a decline, we'll have to see, you know, I guess what's good in good times, you know, we have to agree to deal with the, the pain. So uh, will we receive a reduction year over year? Uh, in, in state aid for unrestricted aid. I guess that would be fair at this point. Um, although it is a small portion, it would impact our revenue model and we'd have to, we would have to make some adjustments. The, the good part about it all at this point is we're only projecting less than 1% increase in, in our state aid uh, at this point in the budget process, but I don't see that changing at all. Um, as we move forward. So I am concerned about that, what other impacts may, may happen in the state budget process and how they flow down to us. Um, it's just different than this year than it has been in past year. The silver lining in the state budget process through this point is, is the FY24 numbers still outpace FY23 numbers. They're just not as strong as they were originally uh, predicted uh, to be at this point. So. Um, Okay, we'll, we'll certainly uh, keep an eye on that and, and make sure that we make appropriate adjustments as soon as possible. The governor's releasing her budget on January 24th, so uh, the beginning of next week we'll have a really good idea. Uh, and the legislature normally works for, from there with their budget process. A question? Dennis. On the, you know, the millionaire's tax, um, how are the numbers this year? And the, are they, I mean, are they rising at all? Are they going down? Um, I'm not exactly sure what the revenues are at the state level on that. I will, I will tell you specifically, it has um, provided one significant benefit to the town that we receive 50% more Chapter 90 funding than we have in any previous year. So Chapter 90 is about a million dollar 
revenue source from the state, and, and we got almost 500000 in additional uh, Chapter 90 dollars. So um, transportation is part of uh, the fair share amendment. Um, so the governor chose to use uh, Chapter 90-like formula to provide additional funding to cities and towns, so we certainly benefit from that. Um, the, the educational aid, which is the other large component, not a real big impact in yeah, this. I'm not exactly sure. They are predicting a, the, the same or slightly higher amount of, from that revenue source. It's my understanding that the main driver behind revenue reductions this year is capital gains. Um, so. so, Kevin, if there is a shortfall in state aid, do we have a plan B that you'll back a sort of a backup plan to make up, or are you just waiting for January 2014 to, to adjust? Yeah, so I, I, we will wait to make any adjustments for 25 until January 24th, but that, you know, that is before we get too far into the budget process, so I think we'll be able to manage it from there. Normally, historically, at least over the past 10 years or so, the, the governor's state aid numbers are normally the lowest that comes out of either the House or the Senate, and then the, the final numbers, so it's a good indicator. I'll be comfortable once we see those. Um, so with the with the state aid, what would be the biggest impact, like with the department wide within the town? Is it schools that have impact, or, is, or is, do we have any? Um, the way we um, utilize revenues is really mutually beneficial. So we don't really tie that those revenue sources to any particular expenditures. You know, we spend so much more on education than the money that we get. Uh, in state aid that's earmarked for education it's kind of just a wash for us so um, it's kind of just a bottom line impact if anything and you know we'd have to share that burden jointly with uh, school and municipal departments thank you so um, I guess I'll just touch on bef before I get too far actually into into this slide but you know, local receipts is something that we're looking at given the strength, strength, strong position that we're at at this point. Um, it's something that we're going to do more analysis on. Uh, we have continued strength in investment income. Um, David and I met with um, our investment advisors from Bartholomew uh, about a week ago, and, and we're going to be following up with them to um, understand um, some better things uh, they committed to meeting with us at the last meeting. So um, there's a slight chance we're using $13.5 million in our, our projections at this point. Um, we'll see where it takes us, but you know, if nothing else, we should be able to make up for any state aid reductions and um, see where we go from there. But um, So that's the, the good and the bad news of, on revenue sources. We're looking forward to 25. So. Just and is that the plan to continue beyond 25, given that state aid is going to decrease? Yeah, we, yeah, okay. yeah. So um, we'll talk a little bit about two main budget areas. The first is operating support. Operating support are um, largely fixed costs, and um, they refer to um, various line items that are shown on the screen that support uh, municipal school and in some instances sell co-operations where they and they provide uh, other financial support to us uh, from Selco so um, operating support is one of our uh, fastest growing expenditure categories mainly because it's where uh, group health insurance sits um, at this point um, we continue to be part of the West Suburban Health Group which is a 10 member joint purchasing uh, group of municipalities that share uh, risk and, and costs for health insurance and reinsurance um, at this point we're holding a nine and a half percent year-over-year increase um, and that's a large number it's a million and a half dollar impact on the budget um, so that's the, the largest increase and one of the largest increases that we see in any line item year over year. Um, operating support's really easy for us to predict and it doesn't take us very long in the budget process to, to get to these numbers, why is, which is why we're confident in sharing them with you. Um, we're taking a close look at un unemployment compensation. It's a 
challenge that we're having this year um, relative to some actions uh, more than appropriate, but just some actions that the, the school has taken. Um, we think that even though we may outpace the FY24 budgeted level, uh, that we will be able to uh, get back to a lower level and keep $100,000 in the budget for FY25. Uh, oil and fuel um, is an area that we're looking at as well. Uh, we just received the bids back. We do the joint purchasing with the city of Worcester for oil and fuel. And I think the best news is we were able to lock in a fixed price where we weren't able to do that in prior years. So I would expect that we might be able to provide a little uh, reduction in this line item as we uh, move into fiscal projection one. And then... Um, General insurance, I think, is something that we're going to be, it's a large line item, about $1.3 million, but we should be able to hold that relatively steady this year, uh, mainly because um, we, when we finalized premiums for fiscal year 24, they were lower than we had anticipated. We changed uh, brokers uh, last May or June, and they were able to find us some savings that we weren't anticipating throughout the budget process. So. Um, that's a line item that thankfully we can hold flat this year. So um, all in all, we're uh, looking at uh, roughly a um, little over 9% increase in the shared operating support. Um, again, the largest driver behind that is the about $16.8 million that we're calculating the need for uh, group health and life insurance. Dennis. Um, I don't know if you can tell us this or not, but what, what do we lock in in a rate at for the oil and fuel? And is it a... I, yeah, I, I got it. Um, hold on if you give me a second. It, uh, and this slide would have... Like, we figured that math out today, so sorry this slide isn't fully updated, but if you just give me one yeah, second. That's fine. All right. Um, so unleaded is locked in at $2.89 for a calendar year 24, and diesel's locked in at... Three dollars um, and six and a half cents for calendar year twenty-four. Okay, so it's a one-year deal. Uh, we do it on, on the calendar year, and then um, estimated um, about a fifteen percent increase for the following year as as our way to you know ensure that we have the funds that we need for the the next six Kyle, months. Yes, yeah. yeah. And we've had really good data on how much fuel, both unleaded and diesel, we use you know, for the first six months and then for the next six months. So we've been tracking that for a long, long time. Oh, and the electric, and what we also did is um, we have um, the building inspector's office and any new electric vehicle going forward will also be charged to this line item as well. And we get charged, um, it's about 162 kilowatt hours per month per vehicle at 13 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, so right now we're estimating two vehicles for the year, um, and that runs about five hundred dollars to charge it. So, I mean, that's great. Yep. I know there's a lot of, I've heard a lot of comments outside of this room about electric vehicles that they really needed. But um, how much cheaper is it there, fuel-wise, to run the electric vehicle versus the what they typically would drive? I, I don't have solid numbers on that yet. I, I think maybe after having maybe a full year of the data, we'd be able to better compare that. Like I, I'm extrapolating one or two months. Yeah, I mean, I th yeah. if you look at it just from a number standpoint, right, you're looking at $250 a vehicle, which would be, what, 100 gallons worth of gasoline based upon yeah. the rates that we locked in. So we're, you know, probably use that. I mean, it's probably, I don't know, a quarter of the cost. Yeah, yeah I'd say, and then just for clarification for people that may be watching, I have hopes. Yeah. Um, how many miles are they putting on these cars? Like we got an electric vehicle for, you know, the assessors. Are they, do they do a lot of driving? Is there a bit, I mean, I, I just think it'd be nice for people to know that, that it's not like we just got an electric vehicle because it's cool yep. and, you know, they want to look good. So, I, know, I think they bought one of them was a Mustang. I know people are very upset about that, but. So, so here's, here's one point of comparison. So the, so the um, electric vehicle that we have in the building inspector's office has been assigned to the plumbing inspector. Yep. And the and as we just talked about, it's going to cost us about two hundred and fifty years to two hundred fifty dollars a year to yeah. charge, and that when it was assigned to the plumbing inspector, the plumbing inspector was receiving a uh, is it four or five hundred four hundred dollars a month vehicle reimbursement stipend to use their own vehicle. 
So we went from $4,800 annual expense to the town to a $250 expense to the town. In whatever the cost of the vehicle, so. Sure. So, yeah. But still probably less than 400 over. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a $40,000 vehicle and, you know. Yeah. 30. Because we got a $10,000 rebate or that's not. Yeah, rebate's included. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it sounds like it was a, a good decision or well thought out decision. Yeah. And it should be beneficial. We, we can get the mileage and yeah, all those yeah. estimates as we use the vehicles. So. Um, in the, in the mis miscellaneous support and uh, telecom network, are we, so is that an upgrade, eh? upgrade of the existing infrastructure? Or is so the, um, we're, we're moving to a managed service agreement with Selco for, uh, to provide the um, the IT services and over the past year and a half we've been getting a better understanding of the true cost to uh, provide those services to the town. Uh, the increase here is um, basically de we're developing a five-year plan um, so that we by the end of the five years we'll be paying uh, a lot closer to what the actual cost for the IT is to, for the town. So this is almost like a, a built-in uh, CPI increase to make sure that we are properly <coughs> Supporting Salco as they're supporting us. Okay. Does that make sense? Or? Yeah. 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 And, I, and I think it's roughly, don't hold me to this, but just really generally speaking, it's about 50 50 between service support and then software annual maintenance yeah. costs in, in that million dollars. Follow up question. So when you say transferring over, are we moving employees over to them? Are we, you know, for the service side, is it going to be different? Is it going to be Salco employees now that are. They've always. Uh, ben Selco employees. Um, the IT department has sort of hovered in between two different management styles. It's, at some points, it's operated as like a department on its own, and sometimes it's sort of entered, operated as like a a, a wing of, of Selco. The managed service agreement will sort of codify that a little bit more and make it a little bit more clear um, for expectations across the board for everybody. Because yeah. I, I know in the past, when they come for budget hearings, they're talking about getting new hardware, you know, yeah. infrastructure. Uh, as they go to manage servers, are we going to be moving our infrastructure over to Selco's, or is it still going to be the same infrastructure we've had? It's, it's the, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. the same as what we've had. Okay. It's just really we're moving to a more, in some ways it's arm's length, but it's really just more documented relationship between the Selco IT team and, and the town as a, uh, a client of theirs that, okay. that they service. Yeah, but as far as the hardware and the infrastructure and all that stuff, um, it will be depreciated through Selco, so we'll get like the double benefit, like okay. we always have. Yeah. So as far as the Medicare employer match is concerned, I may have missed this. The fifteen percent increase is that due to increase in rates or? So the Medicare employees? employer match is the um, slightly less than one percent contribution that employers have to make. So we, the town, as an employer, makes on all of our salary and wages actually what happened is um, this number wasn't updated sufficiently in fy24 so we needed a bigger jump as we move forward in fy25 so our spend rate is is outpacing the fy24 budget number why we needed such a big adjustment all right Yep. So I'll move on to another fixed um, cost area of our budget, which is debt service. It's a little hard to see on the screen, but we've included all the uh, items, projects that are currently in repayment on our debt service schedule, um, mostly uh, from large to small. Um, the project that still continues to be the largest expense is uh, the Beale Early Childhood Center and then, and then the police station, two very visible projects that obviously we just completed recently and we're in the early years of repayment. Um, but, you know, still have plenty of projects in rep repayment. Um, Spring Street School is the only uh, debt service aspect that, you know, wrapped up in fiscal year 24 that, you know, we no longer have to satisfy for fiscal year 25. Um, all in all, it's a, it's a rather uh, level uh, line item with only a roughly, you know, less than a $60,000 increase year over year. Um, and and um, 
you know, happy to answer any questions. I have a couple more slides, though, to, to illustrate just where we're really headed with debt service and, and how those dollars are kind of set up uh, from a, a group standpoint. So when we look at our debt service model, um, the purpose of issuance, um, the schools are the largest source of that. We have about $5.5 million in repayment for school projects. Uh, when it comes to um, general municipal utilities like water and sewer, we have about a million and a half. Uh, that increases, a uh, half million increases associated with our first year of issuance under that $12 million capital bond authorization we received at the annual town meeting last year. Um, Selco is the repayment of their fiber uh, initiative, and they provide dollar for dollar for that, um, but we carry it in our budget. And then on the municipal side, uh, a, a number of projects, again, with about 50% of that going through the, for the police station at a little over $4 million. So um, this is how the obligations lay out from the purpose of issuance. And then if we look um, at where we're headed with debt service, of course, we do a declining debt service uh, model where we issue uh, pretty much level principal payments each and every year. And um, as... Uh, we satisfy the principal, then our interest payments go down, unlike a traditional mortgage, which you pay the same pretty much each and every year. So uh, we are you know, at a point where uh, we have no new debt on the horizon that's, that's planned at this point, and uh, that could change as we consider additional capital projects, but as things stand right now, uh, what's shown on the screen here is fiscal year 24, out through fiscal year 29, so that six-year period. Uh, all things being equal, uh, over that time frame, we would be seeing a notable uh, decrease in the total amount of debt service that uh, we'd be uh, making payments on. What you see in the, in the line graph that runs through at the top is the average single-family home taxpayer impact, and from fiscal year 24 out through 29, there's a reduction from $731 to $573. Again, all subject to change. Everything would have to be voted at town meeting and if excluded at the, you know, at the uh, general ballot for everyone. But this is where we stand right now and uh, as we look out the next five years. Matt, so, Matt a quick question. So we, it doesn't consider any of the anticipated infrastructure projects or capital projects not added in this chart that's correct yep yep kevin um that was very helpful that debt services list that you had how how difficult would it be to possibly add you know maybe like year of completion like seeing spring street yep. roll off having another column to say hey you know we all know the police station's brand new so that's probably what 30 years mm -hmm. like what's the next big one i don't know how difficult that would be to add Let me pull up maybe year seven I don't need to answer it. I'm just saying, okay. yeah, I, I think from a that. visibility, I found that very helpful. Yeah, we can go into that a little bit more during the budget here, yeah. if that's just, okay. Just a thought or yeah, a comment. Yeah, 100%. Thank I, you. I did have one other question. What is the debt service for the water ban? The bottom one, it says water ban, and yep. fiscal 25, we're going to have debt service for it? Yeah, so what that ban is bond anticipation note. Okay. So that is um, oh. the interest associated with the million dollars it was borrowed for the design of the water treatment. Okay, that's the for the water treatment facility. Yeah, okay. the PFOS plant. Yep. Yeah, we can definitely it, pull that whole figure seven mm -hmm. up and we can work through it. Yeah. And that's just the design. That's not That's correct. actually yeah. once the design's done, then the real number it's will It's about a $17 million yeah. construction yeah. estimate for that project. And are we expected to get any state aid for that? Um, we believe that we will uh, be in a good position to get state revolving fund money, which would okay. be the 2% interest. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Rajesh. Yes. So one quick question on the school heating. Um, so there's a two line items, replacement one and replacement two. Are they, mm -hmm. are they across the old schools or is it elementary schools that we're looking at this point? Those are old ones. I can figure out what schools they were. Um, they were targeted for, I think, a, a couple different specific schools at the time. Um, Spring and Patton. Spring and Patton. And then um, with more information, we can provide when those initial, initially were taken out, I guess, it might help as well. That might be a good column to add as yeah. well. Those are taken out in 
2017. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Seems like no more questions. Okay. So that completes your presentation, Kevin? That does, yes. So we can move on to item number 5C. Yeah, go ahead. So in the email I sent out with, um, you know, your meeting information, I had said that this would be something that we'd be talking about, just kind of going over your expectations for the budget hearings in March. Um, so in the drive, I have just dropped in a document, and I'll go over it as well. But um, the current you know, requirements that we ask departments to present on are financials. So we do two prior year actuals. We do the current fiscal year budget, the department request, and then fiscal projection one. And then we also present on their capital requests if they have any. We also present staffing plans, so historical full-time equivalent counts and current and then proposed. We do that by job classification. And then in the past couple years, we've added kind of department highlights section. So we do you know goals and accomplishments, um, significant budget changes, ties to strategic plan, grants and other supplemental funds, and then some data, benchmark, and performance indicators. So we're just looking for feedback on if there's anything that you know we're not presenting that you would like us to. And you know, if this is a conversation that continues outside of this meeting or even at the, the February meeting, I'm really just looking for some, some feedback on if you could ask you know, every department one question, what would it be? Um, yeah, I think for me, one of the things I'm interested in, right, just as somebody within my job that I, not a department head, but I often have to think about you know, where do we want to be in three years or in five years? And what what is the budget ask that I have or this, you know, the, the tie to the strategic plan that I'm asking for in, in this fiscal year? How's that helping reach our three to five year plan? So I, I know last year, I think a lot of my questions may have not been appropriately pointed at this upcoming year fiscal questions, but more of what is the long term vision that the department has for their department. So I don't know if if the budget hearings are the appropriate place for that conversation, but um, just something Makes I'm sense. interested in. Sure. I would also like to see sort of um, sort of some description of any gaps that we have between goals and achieve uh, what was achieved in terms of like uh, we do have the performance indicators and all that, but maybe some root cause analysis in, in case there was any variance. Mm -hmm. If it was an excess variance, why? If it was mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a deficit, why? Sure. Things like that in terms of goals or, or budgetary numbers and all that. That's fair. That, that would be very helpful. Okay. 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 Rajesh. I, I think I totally agree. I was thinking the same thing. Like, if we can see what's been aimed last year and what's achieved and what's not, what fell through. Sure. And then what would what were the countermeasures as um, my chairman mentioned, and then one other thing uh, also what's a, do we put a I don't I, didn't rem I don't remember whether we have the risk assessment, what could be the risk, mm -hmm. what percent risk is that projections or forecasts fall into, okay. confidence levels. I have to think about that one, but okay, understood. Right. I think all of that helps in like what can we do better. Mm -hmm. as a team because um, there's always space for improvement yeah yeah a couple sure. one is what percentage of the budgets are actually grant based that you know and what does it cost them to get the grants and do we have you know do they have grant writers on staff etc how do or would it help to have a grant writer on staff if it, was, if it becomes a higher percentage and the second thing is especially within the police and fire departments is the overtime I'm really getting a good handle on how much overtime we're paying each year, and is there a way to reduce the overtime? It doesn't mean, you know, if we have a lot of overtime, doesn't mean we don't have enough employees, mm -hmm. that type of thing, just to sort of factor that out. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I don't know if that overtime includes police details that are also done, but, I mean, just I'm thinking just a normal overtime for the police officers. Yeah. No, details, so anything that's paid by a private third party, most, right. most 
by the time that you see a detail on the street, it's it's uh, not within the operating budget. Yeah, that's what I thought. But just in general, what's the operating budget over time? Yep, absolutely. And what's the in the cause of all that over time? Mm -hmm. Anything else from the committee? Just, just yep. piggybacking kind of that theme. Um, you know, those timelines are coming up pretty quick, Kevin. I think you said you got, you know, you're meeting with department heads. Is, is anything, and I, I guess more of a comment, I'm not asking you to share, but, and it may have already been echoed in this meeting, like what are their priorities at, could we see that before we meet to get a general sense? I guess reflecting back on my sure. first one last year, mm -hmm. it was like drinking from a fire hose, right? Like. It was great presentations, and I was just a little overwhelmed on kind of everything that was coming at us. But it, you know, when you really get to the nuts and bolts of what they're trying to accomplish, what's available, if we had some kind of lead into that, you would mention like the state piece is coming out next week, I think, mm -hmm. and that maybe we'll see something prior to that. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, not to overwhelm you guys either. There's a Very lot good. you need to yep. do on the things that we ask, and, and I understand that. But at the same time, if there was any indication, <clears throat> excuse me of um you know w what they're looking to do versus you know just kind of seeing it for the first time yep. we come in on those that saturday because th those timelines are pretty tight for them to get through yep. what they want what they've accomplished you know how it ties to the strategic plan etc so uh you know just make good use of their time and yours as well as we probably would be a comment i guess i have overall yep. thanks sure Dana, please um, I know, I, if I remember correctly, I think some of us had some some comments. Some things ran, ran long, and so um, you know, folks were here early, waiting for their time slot and things. And so I don't know um, how you determine the order of the departments that as they present, and if there are any opportunities there um, um, to be more efficient, more more thoughtful with folks' time on 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 just kind of the what the order we go in. I wasn't sure if it was alphabetical or there was some <laughs> um, well, we, some logic to the order. We bring them in on functional areas, so we like to bring public safety in together, police, fire, right. you know, emergency management, and then administration and finance, community development, uh, human services, uh, and then public works. So um, we take those notes, and we have an extensive uh, list from last year that, that we always try to right size it it's always a work in progress so we will we definitely will look at that again I think it also comes down to how many questions are asked <laughs> <laughs> and you've already heard me say it the last town meeting I really like to see the town meeting members show up to this to these committee these hearings because there's nothing worse than going to town meeting and having people see it for the first time and, yeah you know have to ask all the questions on that mm -hmm. so we are an open meeting. The town tries does a good job letting everyone know what's going on, but people have to take, you know, the initiative to do it. We can't walk into their houses and sit down and walk them through the thing beforehand. We'd have to do the finance committee meeting at Oak School then, if we have the whole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> history has shown we could probably still do it in a phone booth, but um, that would I think that'd be a good problem to have. Yeah, that would be. Yep. Standing room only, then people would show up more often to get from front row seat. I mean, it is our town, and the town meeting members are the ones who really, you know, vote things on things, so they should be as knowledgeable as possible. Mr. Chair? Please, Dana. Um, I, I think in the spirit of, right, I, I see this as a very um, collaborative, right, so is especially for those of us that are relatively new, right? If, if there's any, you know, feedback or, or what, sh what are the things we should be asking, mm -hmm. you know, coming into this next one or any, sure. you know, I think that would be helpful as okay. well. Okay. We can talk about that in February. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Happy to think about that Good as point. well. Yep. yep. If there are no other questions from, or comments from the committee, we can proceed to item number six on the agenda which is to review the meeting schedule so we have a meeting on february 22nd 2024 march 21st is our first budget hearing uh, march 23rd will be the second budget hearing 
April 11th uh, is the public hearing on the annual, the, 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 the warrant articles. And we'll have the second one, if needed, on the 25th. Then we uh, go to our annual town meeting on Monday, May 20th, 2024. Does anybody have any comment or question about the schedule? If not, we shall move to... Are we, uh, sorry, we, um, the March 21st meeting, are we going to start that earlier? Is that for 7 p.m.? Yeah. yeah. Or will it be yeah, we'll we probably do it earlier. One at six six. That yeah. 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 Last year we did six to nine. Yep. I remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Let's bring lots of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the Saturday one, like full day one, right? Eight in the morning yeah, till three, three, three thirty. Yep. We're done. Okay. Uh, item number seven: correspondence received, a memorandum to the finance committee from Kevin J. Mizikar, town manager, regarding proposed dates for actions relative to the 2024 annual town meeting, dated January 16, 2024. Are there any comments on the correspondence that we received? If not, we proceed to adjourn. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All against, please say nay. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone, for your participation.